Welcome everybody, we're gonna get started. So uh, thank you for being here today. I'm Kelly Moore with the Missoula County Extension Office. Uh, and it is MSU, so, uh, but we like every, all, every university, so we're happy to be here. And um, so our Extension Office, we have also a plant specialist, we have the 4-H uh, program, so we do a lot of different things out there. And I am the family and consumer science uh, person, so I get to do a lot of fun cooking classes. Thanks to Sarah and uh, Ron. For <laughs> we do have these um, where you can view them later on. So, and it's been a learning curve for me to feel comfortable in front of the camera. So <laughs> it just takes some getting used to. But I'm happy to be here, and tonight we're going to talk about charcuterie. So that's probably pretty familiar to most of you. It's uh, gotten to be a lot more popular and it goes way back. In fact, it's uh, a French word and literally it's translated um, the products of a fancy pork butcher. That's what charcuterie means, so. <laughs> and I never knew that, so that's interesting. And of course now there's a much different definition. You see it a lot. Uh, if you go on Pinterest, you uh, see a lot of different variations. So it's not typically the traditional kind of charcuterie that you see. Uh, there's kind of a new term called a grazing board, uh, and that's what a lot of people like to do. Um, it looks nice. Uh, there's a lot of stuff there you can set out. You don't have to, other than replenish it, you don't have to worry about you know, a lot of prep time. Um, sometimes you get some kind of crazy combinations too. So if you ever look on Pinterest, just put in grazing board and see what pops up. Uh, sometimes it's a little overwhelming how much stuff they put together, but I kind of like to go the, the old style if I can. Um, there are certain rules to charcuterie and otherwise it's just kind of a, let your imagination uh, run wild. So um, I will show you a few boards that I use. It doesn't mean you have to use a board necessarily. I've used platters before, kind of just whatever you have. So, but this is a traditional. So um, one of these boards, uh, you might think it looks kind of familiar. It was not an original charcuterie board. This is for a very large um, group. I've used this before. Does this look familiar to anybody? Yes, it was a pizza board at one time. So, so thing, you just have to look for something that you think looks kind of fun, that you would use a lot. It's easy to serve things on there because of the handle. Um, I typically kind of keep it oiled a little bit and keep it washed off, but other than that, you know, it's very easy to store. Uh, this is kind of a more traditional charcuterie board, a little bit smaller, uh, made of a little different kind of wood. It's important for all of these that you keep them treated and oiled well, so they look nice. And so they won't absorb odors, you know, and stain like they normally would if you don't oil them. Like just a vegetable oil, it works well. They come in all sizes. This is probably the smallest one I've ever had before. Uh, this one's kind of nice for kids to do something with, or a little dessert one too. So uh, you might use special tools for your charcuterie board. This is one example. So they're kind of a little bit fancy, which looks nice. So these. And these are all for different cheeses or to cut. There's a sharper one here and the knife. So that set is nice to have. Um, you will become a collector of uh, many small containers, which I have. Uh, lots of white bowls. It doesn't have to be a white bowl. It could be anything. But you want to have a lot of variety on there. Um, so I'll try to use some unusual containers. You don't want them to uh, take over the entire board. So certainly I wouldn't put a giant jar on the small one. That doesn't look too great. So make it kind of um, go with the size of board that you have. And we'll talk more about that later. Also charcuterie is um, you tend to kind of pick things up with your hands. and. That's okay if you know the people whose hands are picking things up. <laughs> but if you sort of, a large group, it kind of makes me a little bit more nervous. So I like to have uh, a lot of these around, some tongs. 
Uh, sometimes you feel like you need to give everybody a pair of these before they come to the charcuterie board. But, or and maybe you could put a sign, please wash your hands first. I don't know. But also what the things you put on the board, uh, food safety is an important thing too. Charcuterie boards tend to uh, set out for a long time. So sometimes it's the main the food. It's not just something you serve as an appetizer. So that food should not set out more than a couple of hours. And there are certainly some things that are a lot more um, prone to a food safety issue than others. So usually if you have fruits and vegetables, which I usually try to always put on a board, you can leave those out for quite, well, probably up to four hours, uh, unless there are uh, cantaloupes, uh, melons, that's kind of an exception. Um, anything that's, you typically put meat on the board and cheese, so you certainly don't want those to be out more than four hours. It's kind of the danger zone after that, so. And if you're serving in a place that's very, uh, very warm, if you're outside, the sun's on there, that would not be a good thing either. You don't want people to get sick eating from your charcuterie board. It should be a very pleasant experience. So, um, there are uh, typically not any one thing that you should put on your board, but uh, there's some things I kind of just do as a, uh, a usual. I like to um, put things in a certain order, and we'll kind of go uh, with that here in just a few minutes. Uh, one other thing I forgot about, um, anybody who might have food allergies, you might want to kind of, uh, you don't always know when you're serving a large group of people. So maybe you want to put out a little sign. Um, I will be using nuts tonight. Some people are allergic to nuts. Um, what else? Just uh, several different things that you should kind of be aware of. Um, the nice thing about the charcuterie board, you can just have fun. Uh, it's all about design and decorating too. So leave yourself plenty of time to work on it. You can slap things on there and people are gonna eat it. That's not gonna be a problem. But it's kind of, you know, what's important to you. It should be a pleasurable experience for you. Leave yourself plenty of time to do it, okay? Uh, you don't wanna do it too far ahead because then you'll have to put everything back in the fridge, um, you know, but again, it's hard to know. If you know people are coming within, say, uh, 45 minutes to an hour, you certainly can put it together and set it out. So, uh, does it really take utensils normally? You can uh, use napkins, uh, small plates. So it's really a nice, easy way to do something very elegant. So I'm gonna wash my hands up here and we're gonna get started putting some things together. And please don't be afraid to talk or ask questions, any of that. Just whatever you feel comfortable. All right. So a lot of things, too, should be seasonal. Of course, if you have anything like uh, pickle products or uh, jams or jellies, any of that, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you make it yourself, that's even better. So, and let people know that you made it. Uh, but otherwise, you can put just pretty much anything you want to put out there. I typically like to, um, there's a few things I always put on a charcuterie board. Uh, I don't always put meat on there, but uh, normally I would. Always cheese, always crackers, bread, uh, always pickled items, uh, some vegetables, and some fruit. So you basically could make a meal out of all those things. It doesn't have to be really expensive to put one together, so we just have to. I usually buy things and just keep them in my um, pantry. And, you know, if I need to pull it out fast, I have all the stuff I need. So, so we're going to kind of all join in and do a little bit of this in a little while. So I hope you'll be ready to do that. <laughs> okay, but there's one thing you have to do first. Wash my That's hands. right. You do have to wash your hands. So. All right. Um, in fact, if you would like to come do that, and we're not going to mess up uh, our cameraman, uh, there actually is no soap right here, so you might have to go back to the restroom and wash up. Yeah. And then we'll kind of join around. Oh, there was soap down. Okay. Sorry, just didn't see that. All right. Thank you. 
So I'm going to kind of start uncovering some things here and we'll get started. Sometimes if I make these up ahead of time and uh, ask people to uh, kind of help out and make one, it's kind of more intimidating. So I like to just start from the beginning. We also are going to need some garnish. So I have a little kale, some red leaf kale here, and a little rosemary. And you probably need a towel. There we go, right there. All right, so uh, we're gonna use the big board, I think, this time. Well, actually, you know what we're gonna do? This is like you're making it up as we go along. We're gonna put another board over here, so. Whoever wants to work on this board and whoever wants to work on this board, this one we're going to save to the very last. <laughs> so, come on up. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, the basic thing, too, about the charcuterie board, we don't want to leave any spaces on there, any holes. We want to kind of fill in everything so it looks a lot more appetizing that way. So, um, I brought three different kinds of fruit, but I also like to use dried fruit, so that will fill in some space. Um, of course, we'll have our meat. So I'll kind of put the meat and the cheese on first, um, and then we'll kind of fill in the other space. So whether you want to, wherever you want to put the meat on there, or it's down the center, around the side, wherever you want to do. Okay, let me open this up. Um, you know, a lot of places you have Fancy uh, meat stores can go in and get all this slice, but uh, we will use Costco so today <laughs> to do all. There's nothing wrong with that at all. That's for sure. Then I have this another one here. You can start with that. Yes, with a. And uh, let's see. How about I get you different utensils for that to help get that out of there? Here we go. Okay, yes, you're welcome. Here's one for you. So this is. Um, I just bring you doing it. Well, what's the fun in that? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So you can in you can roll it up. You can put probably you, you don't want to put all of it on there to begin with, but uh, at least half of it. Well, I think they use some kind of uh, glass and they just keep folding it around the top. Oh, yeah. That's what. Oh, I think I saw that. Yeah. But otherwise, that, just, yeah. yeah, can roll it yourself and until it looks like a rose. I, <laughs> that's, a, that's what they do. Okay, it. No. Yeah. And the prosciutto is a little bit harder to work with because it's so thin. So you might want to roll that up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Those as well. do, you, do you serve them whole like that? Nope, here? we're going to cut okay. these in half. Oh, you do? Yes. And so whenever I love figs, if I can ever find oh, figs, I just figs. have to buy them. Okay. So, uh, so where'd you buy those? I, oh, I go to so many different stores, I get mixed up oh. where I got things. Um, what was that, the good food store? Or? They didn't have them because I did didn't. look there when I, uh, yeah. I'm going to wash up these figs, so. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah, anyway, you want to roll it, put it flat, it's just up to you. And the nice thing about it, when you're uh, decorating the plate, if you don't like it, just undo it and start all over. No. That's the good thing no. about it. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's true, but I didn't want, you know, this is all your imagination. But I will cut these figs out because they're so beautiful on the inside. So that's why I say use the figs. Or fig jam, I always make that part of it if we don't have. Do you buy that or make your own? Well, that, thank you for uh, reminding me. Uh, this book, because I always uh, bring books that I love and use a lot. And this is America's Test Kitchen. It's do it yourself. This will show you how to make just about anything that you can add to your board. Because if you buy it, it's kind of pricey. So if you can make it yourself, 
Uh, it, this, there's fig jam in here. There's, I mean, just some really fun things. And these are all things you make and just stick in the fridge and use them as you need them. So you're welcome to look at that at some point. I did do the pickle beets myself because I just thought mm -hmm. it would just be fun to do that. So, okay. Before we get back to the figs though. Uh, the cheese I typically buy in bigger chunks because you just don't know how much cheese everybody's going to eat. I would rather have too much than not enough. I will not, I won't say ever, because grilled cheese is different, but uh, I don't like to buy cheese that's already in pieces or mm. grated. It's yes, it's yeah, it. it's not, yep. and grated, you, you just don't know. Can I have well, a small talking. container? Yes, like you may. Which yeah. one would you like? Anything, okay, yeah. there we go. All right, and so typically with cheese too, you want a little variety, so I have a little, um, this is Beecher's, which has a very nice flavor, kind of a cheddar, I believe. And then I used to, or usually, get something that's smoked, so like a Gouda. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I could have a, a whole board entirely of cheese, but that is probably not the best idea. And then I have a soft spread, so I have like a garlic cheese spread, and so that leads to a pretty nice variety that way. Well, it seems to be the hardest part is just getting the wrapping off of all these. So you put the beets in there? Yes, and because they're kind of um, still have a lot of juice on them, I wanted it to, to continue to soak in all that. So let's see. So you have a choice: jar or actually made the. Wider mouth jars might be a better thing for beets. Okay. I will get you some spoons here. There might be a few things in there, maybe you don't recognize no. that. Okay, but they're good. They're all <laughs> there are some cloves in there. Some, yeah. Oh, look what I did. That is very nice. Oh, that looks great. Uh, that's like. We're just. We were still working on a. What are you doing now? Just. Yeah, just. Probably what I would do too with. Um, let's. Not that I'm messing too up much, the range, but no, 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 meat. no, oh. not not that at all. But I think a uh, just suggestion. Maybe we'll no, do the yeah, dried yeah. fruit on the board, but not in a bowl. Okay, okay. We'll use that okay. bowl for something else. Like juicy yeah, okay. right. Is this too yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that would be good. Okay. Yeah, beets, and then we have. We have olives here also. Yeah, usually the dried fruit, we kind of put that on the board, so um, we could change our minds too. But to start with, let's just use the pickled things in the bowls. And I usually like to bring some honey as well. It's kind of nice. If you can ever find honeycomb, it's really good to put some honeycomb on the board with a little knife. I always serve a little bread and crackers too on the board. So, yes. Okay. Yeah, the beets definitely will have to be in a bowl. All of that necessarily. Okay. Just use a different. I will do a little slicing of the cheese here too. So, uh, you tend to s slice the cheese into slices or chunks? I like to make it chunks, but it's good to have some variety too. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes I'll do uh, start out with slices and then let's see, this is. Yeah, another thing to look at too, the cheese might have a little bit of a rind on there. So in this case, we're going to take that off. I did the beets. Yeah. 
Uh, it looks like someone took a bite out of this. But I'm not sure what happened. Do you want to wait for you to keep guiding us, or do you want us to? Just you, keep I going? think you should take off on your own because you okay. are you're doing a great job. Okay. Yeah. What I'm going to do is put some cheese out there. No kidding. Yes. These might be a little bit smaller because this cheese is pretty um, potent. It's a very nice flavor, but it's a lot. This is like a gouda, a smoked oh, yeah. gouda, but. And sometimes, oh, I see this cheese, it was cold, but it's warmed up a little bit, so it's a little harder to cut. So you want to keep your cheese refrigerated for. But didn't you tell me once that cheese is the best choice? That's true, it is. You're right. It's easier to slice when it's cold, so you, but you want to be able to come to kind of room temperature on your board. So, yeah. And I'll kind of let you both share this. Uh, cheese, yeah, because I each one of you can have choose to have one of these on there with the cheese. Yes, I would put yeah olives in a dish would be great. Yeah, a dish, yes, a bowl. Yeah, there we go. Any, either any of those. Okay, there's some of your cheese to begin with, and then I'll cut up the other. I say just the whole point of this is just don't be afraid to do your board and you'll be surprised how easy it is. And you're welcome to take a sample of a bite of something while you're doing it. That just goes without saying. <laughs> And then you just said, whoops, I already did that. Yeah, you didn't even know. Mm, really yeah, the pecans are toasted, which I like to do that. Toast them oh. in the oven or in a really hot pan because it brings out the flavor mm -hmm. of the nuts. Yeah. This is good for you. Yum. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what did I do with the, I think I did something with the um, paper, but... <laughs> Uh, there it is, right there. Is that from? Uh, that is a Costco cheese, Ooh, just Costco. because I can get it in uh, bulk there, so, so it's good. a better price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing, you're afraid to buy a big thing of cheese because you think, wow, what if I don't like that? Yeah. But, so it just takes kind of testing it out. <laughs> Very fancy what you did there. Yes. Oh, those look so great. You guys are doing a super job. Okay. Now I have cheese all over the fig board. And if you'd like, you could pick, um, cut off a little piece of this to make it more decorative. <laughs> See, it's just beautiful color already, just to add all the, yeah, if you want to tuck any of this in at this point, or uh, that leaf might still be a little bit wet. You always want to try to use some different flavors of crackers. Here is some sliced uh, bread, too, you can put around on. Okay. Oops, I almost forgot. I like to use these uh, smaller, like cocktail cucumbers. Yeah, they're just a really nice, mild flavor. You don't have to peel these either. So that's the nice thing about it. Yeah, let me rinse those off just in case. These are kind of my go-to. Spicy pickles with the onions and garlic. Oh, sure. Oh, so good. You want to always put something pickled on there. Yeah. Um, if I have a paper plate, I'm just going to put the figs on a paper plate and you guys can use these as you want. And 
be sure and taste on. And of course, there are many varieties of fig, so you have to wait till they're in season. But the, these black mission figs are about my favorite. I might, I probably at um, either the Good Food Store or Natural Grocers. Okay. So they tend to, uh, Costco used to have some, but they're, they weren't there the last time. So if you want to put any figs on there. Sometimes the com uh, computers, uh, cucumbers, I like to do serve sort of like a slice and an angle because it's just adds a little more variety and okay and I'll just pass some of these. Not that I don't trust you with a knife, but I enjoy <laughs> that way. There's nobody to blame but me. That's right. Yeah, it's just if you ever need something to have your kids or grandkids stay busy, this, don't give them a sharp knife for sure, but just put some things out there already cut and let them organize and... Oh yeah, this looks good. There we go. So you, that way you get a little bit of fresh things as well as... Whoops. Mm. All right, I'm going to spread this cheese out a little bit here so you both have some. There's another one. Let's see. We do do good work. Yes, excellent. Yes, and if you just met somebody for the first time, you wouldn't say, let's just go do charcuterie. <laughs> There's a little bit of a garlic yep. herb cheese. Ooh. And I'm going to put that on smaller because it's nice to have that contrast. Yeah. My boyfriend and I were going to go get dinner after this, but I don't think we're going to Sorry. <laughs> There's a little bit of the other cheese for you. Okay. Now, let's see, what have we forgotten? Nuts. We have nuts. Did you get nuts down there? You have some? Okay. So I usually try to get a saltier nut. So this is the salted almonds. And then these are just the toasted pecans. Okay. So oh. I. can put those in little bowls. Uh, no, uh, you can just scatter them throughout because that way people can pick those up and uh, I'm not going to say never again, but I wouldn't recommend putting like salted peanuts. I just don't feel oh, like those yeah. go well. So, yeah, kind of. well, I mean, really for a, that sounds snobbish, but <laughs> no, I think, yeah, everybody's tasted that before. It's not, it's compatible. Yeah, right. And a lot of times, so I'll put the Kalamata olives, which are the... Uh, more brownish olives and just mix those two together. Well, you can even find oh. your green olives that have the almonds or like the blue True. cheese. True, or the jalapenos. Mm -hmm. That would be really good. Yes. Wow. Do you want me to marry okay. these uh, meat trays here? Sure. That sounds fine. Um, I also have an apple. If anybody feels like you have room for an apple, I'm, mm -hmm. it's always kind of good. The apple's kind of my all reliable too. It, you just don't want to cut it up too early because it gets brown unless mm -hmm. you put a little orange juice or uh, lemon juice. I'm gonna rinse my, whoops, I'll use this knife. Oh. What else, does anybody think of something else that you would put on one that you would like to see? Cherries? Dried cherries, we have those, yes. And sometimes I mix those in with the nuts, so people can just grab. Good idea. I don't know where all this food's gonna go, but I don't think we're all gonna be able to eat it, that's for sure. Oh, come well. on. <laughs> <laughs> 
these boards got big really fast. Yes, they did. <laughs> but that's the thing. They don't look like things are going to fall off. I mean, that's the, the nice thing yeah. that it stays uh, contained nicely. I always try to slice these very thin, leave the skin on, so you can just kind of... Uh, are you going to go mid to the olive set, please? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so basically you're getting about every food group when you make these. And it doesn't have to be that expensive to make them, so if you find them for that. One good uh, tart apple works well. I think this might be a honey crisp apple. And again, to use, try to use um, seasonal produce. I mean, if it doesn't taste good, you don't want to eat it on there, no matter how pretty it is. So, there we go. Okay. And it's a sign of success when we see a, what a big mess we made. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and if you don't have one of these sets, don't worry about it. I mean, there's so many other fun little things to use. Uh, I have a whole set of like these I use for oh, <laughs> Christmas yeah, time, so which is kind of fun. Uh, just some random ones if you need something to be spread. Uh, this, uh, this, I think I remember using this when I was. I don't know, six, seven years old. So it's oh, really hey, an old, fun. yes. Wow. <laughs> so kind of fun to use for the olives and uh, a little fun small spoon. Anything you can find that's mm -hmm. just fun. Um, sometimes I also, because set out these, so people who might be tempted to pick up beets oh, yeah. with their fingers, mm -hmm. which wouldn't be a good idea. Yeah, use some fun skewers, toothpicks, any of those. Yeah, I would like to take a picture of those as well. Yes. So Remember why I left my phone. The honey, um, sometimes it's kind of put on some cheese, like if you have feta, a block of feta, you might put honey on there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, or brie, if you bake the brie a little bit before, just drizzle a little honey on there, put a little rosemary sprig on top. It looks really nice that way. Yeah, okay. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that it is. Wow. Yeah, oh, perfect. So nice. Okay, well, let's have people come up or set these out on the table and just uh, start eating something there. Yeah, yes, you get to eat them. That's what we did those for. And then while you're doing that, we're going to... So I see. We leave this here. And good idea. It saves mm -hmm. dropping food, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's just bring out the rest of the plates. Yeah, Perfect. Sense. Yes, that does make sense. And our fancy napkins here. And if you need this, a spreader. Sure. The photographer needs to see it. There we go. <laughs> It is right down here. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, also, you can each have a tone here. Okay, we should have things. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've been building it with our fingers. That's true. <laughs> The smaller board, I was just going to show you kind of a quick little dessert thing that the kids would like to do. Oh, sure. Oh, that would have been fun to have them. And if you, like I say, if you have more than one of these. <laughs> you put the little weird. What's fun to do? I remember when I was a kid, my mom made 
pickled beans, and I really didn't like them. Oh, really? But wow. Now it's now it's okay, sure. Some of your, your tastes change. Well, and everybody, when they make them, they usually do something a little different. So. She gave a recipe. Is that? Yeah. That and yeah, that's a recipe we have there on the table. And those are just refrigerator beets, so you know, if you were to can them, it'd be a, a different uh, method for sure. They should be sweet, I <laughs> bet. <laughs> we'll see. So those aren't canned? Those are no, just those were just made, and uh, they kind of sit in the refrigerator for 24 hours, and then by then. Yes. Uh huh. Good. Which that calls for, you know, you always put a little spice in there. So it calls for cloves and a little uh, peppercorn. So it's kind of a little bit of a kick. And the star anise, yeah. Which I love just the look of those. They are. Chicken noodle soup. Oh, yes. Hi. <laughs> Oh, that would have been perfect. I know. I knew that was missing. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's on the floor above. I think that's probably that's where that's allowed. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So, for the kids' one, I'm just putting out some simple graham crackers. This is a little... Um, Almond butter, honey almond butter, which peanut butter is fine too. I just happen to have this. And so, whoops. Basically, you can use a little less fancy containers. So, we've got a peanut butter one, and we have a little Nutella, which kids love. Yeah. Just stick that in another container. And then if you didn't have enough, uh, let's see, what else? This um, sugar, this turbinado sugar, I think that's how you pronounce it. And I just use it to coat things. It's kind of nice and crunchy and kind of fun. Yeah. So there it is right there. You can buy this in bulk. What do you do? What? Well, it tastes great on if you um, get so strawberries and stick it in a little sour cream and then dip it in this yeah. sugar. Oh. It is amazing. Oh, and then we're just going to cut up a few pieces of banana here. Eating some of that rosemary, even with the cheese and crackers. Yeah, isn't it a nice, very nice compliment? And again, anytime you cut things in a little different shape, kind of makes kids want to eat it a little bit more. So just something as simple as that, and just makes it more fun for. We got a knife here. Yeah, I'll get mm -hmm. uh, yeah. isn't it funny? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be a salt spoon oh. for people who are watching their salt intake. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Not me. No, I'm just, you can easily have two scoops as you can one, yeah. right? There we the, go. The kids plate. Yes, I mean just something. Plate. Yes, yes. The dessert plate, so. Oh, that could be really yeah. nice. Oh. Get this one for the sugar there. So 
So obviously charcuterie is a lot more fun when they do it together. So it's a good, yes, a good party game, <laughs> for yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, that's it. And so yeah, we're all more creative together. And then um, I'm surprised it definitely could be a, a, a meal, so you wouldn't have to make too much many meals. But so hope you've enjoyed that. You did a super job. Thank you. Well, about that, but <laughs> Oh, so thank you very much. Yeah, just enjoy. Um, enjoy this. Yes, I will. Thanks, Ron. We'll see you next time. <laughs>